My name is James Haddad. I'm a <coughs> landowner in the Big Ivy watershed. I have a couple, sorry, a couple quick questions. I'm a landowner here. Has any plan actually been approved yet? And does this meeting have any bearing on the decisions made for land management in Big Ivy? Do we have any say? Is this meeting going to make a difference? At James, all? that's a two fantastic questions. And, and the answer to number one is that no. No decision has been made on the future management direction for Big Ivy. The second question is, does this meeting matter? Does this have an, an impact or an effect on how we make these decisions? And the answer is absolutely yes. For God's sakes, there's like 200 plus people potentially here tonight. And that sends a very clear message that there are deeply held values in this community on how the future management of Big Ivy needs to be conducted. How you can do that, how you can... <laughs> um, send in information via email, send in via information uh, through organizations that you're affiliated with, how, uh, write a letter, give me a phone call, call Heather, call James, meet with any of my staff, come by the district office of Mars Hill. All that feedback is, is going to be document, captured, documented, made part of the record, and will certainly have an influence on how your public lands are managed for the next 15 to 20 years. Awesome. And my question is, we want this turned into reserve. We don't, we would like for it to be set aside because it's so special. Scientists come from all over the country to study it. Well, what are the steps that we can take to actually save it and preserve it and turn it into something other than just national forests? <laughs> But when I looked at this map, you made that 30,000 foot perspective look so inoffensive. And yet, when I look at this, it looks like you're looking at something through a Norden bomb site from a B-26. And I think a lot of people here feel that way. What are the chances that there will be extensive timbering? in Big Ivy. That's kind of what we see as a starting point here, and people keep trying to step around it, but uh, can somebody answer that question at this point? We're not making any decisions on logging on, an, on a piece of land at this point. Um, what is represented on the map is a possible alternative for how the area could be managed. We understand that you don't do clear cutting like you used to, and thank God you don't. But we've got a, a great old growth place. Can't you, within the system you have today, do a designation besides one and two where you close the door and there's no possibility of logging? Because I don't think people here want logging, do you? Oh. versus uh, 3, 4B, and 5 that close the door, and you can't, or no, I guess it's, yeah, 3, 4B, 5, and 6 that prohibit a consideration, and then I don't think you'd have many people here without having Congress get involved, because I think you have the power to pick another option that does not permit logging, right? Yeah. Came for strangers because you love the forest. Um, I'm here tonight. I, I'm not from this area, but I've been hiking in the Big Ivy since I was a teenager, and I'm here tonight with my seven-year-old son. You know, can you can you promise us that this is a democratic process and not a bureaucratic one? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the problem is we're talking about an urban wildland interface, and I don't think you're doing enough to realize how fragile that is. 
also, I've heard, I'm a scientist, what I've heard up front is not very good science. If you're talking about where are the old growth areas, they're not all in the wilderness study areas. If you're talking about what is the desired conditions, fire is not part of this ecology. You don't have, you have too much rain up here to get uh, a fire regime like you talked about in Colorado. So I don't think managing for disturbance is really the way to go here. And I think I use this for research, I use it for teaching. I've been off trail in many places up here, and it's really, you know, it's, it's an incredible area. And it just doesn't make sense to have any logging up in here. What I want to remind people is that on average, somewhere between 1,000 to 1,500 acres are, are actively managed or logged on the, national, on the Nantahala and Pisgah on an annual basis, which is a tiny fraction. We never intended to suggest that the Forest Service was proposing in any draft uh, way, shape, or form to uh, put 700,000 acres of this national forest, the Pisgah and the Nantahala, into the suitable timber base. And we're also going to step back and try to re-engage the public on explaining what that even means to have uh, landscape, parts of the landscape in, in the uh, suitable base and how that ties back to the laws that move us forward. Because to us, that seems like if this isn't a suitable timber base, then that means at some point it's open. It's, for it's, open. Right. You I know, it's wide open. That sentiment. So with that, what I can say is that there is no current plan to uh, log anywhere in the Big Ivy area. Uh, and as we move forward, we're planning to have some additional public meetings um, in, in April. What are those things that are really important for us to think about in these special areas? Um, what are the, the desired future conditions that you want to see in a place like Big Ivy? Um, are there some challenges there with, with recreation or different things that you want to look at? Um, and how might we, um, how might those alternatives help us get to some of those goals that, that you all see? We are one of the stakeholders. So all of your voices will continue to be represented, but make sure you continue to stay in communication with us. Friends of Big Ivy, thanks to this turnout, now has a, has a place at the table. So thank you to all of you.